just a few short months prior to the League of Legends Season 2 World Championships, South Korea acquired a server to start playing one of the world's biggest esports. Since then, the region has dominated the competitive scene. Korea sets the meta, they iterate on it, and they style in 1v1 situations. They're smarter, faster, and better, and everyone knows it. There is an indisputable gap. A representative from South Korea has won every world championship since season two. That is, until now. As Worlds 2018 approached, Korea looked primed to defend their reputation on home soil. And despite Chinese juggernaut RNG looking strong, KT Rolster still boasted one of the most lethal Korean rosters in recent memory. SK Telecom T1 and the god of Korean League, Faker, were nowhere in sight. But that familiar feeling remained. The feeling of lost hope that, despite proven rosters from the rest of the world, Korea would find a way to win. They'd pummel our hopes of an exciting storyline, the gap would hold, and the rest of the world would be left wondering what they could have done differently. But this year, something was different. After King's Own Dragon X's lackluster LCK summer performance and Griffin's loss in the gauntlet, Korea ended up sending Gen G, the Afrika Freaks, and the aforementioned KT Rolster to Worlds. Gen G bombed out of groups, going 1 in 5. They lost both games to Vitality and RNG and went 1 in 1 with Cloud9. As Vitality absolutely turns and shocking off, QV won't be making it too far as he goes down a double kill for Kickus. Their tendency to play for the late game was thwarted early and often by teams that were looking to go for the throw. Shen joins as well, and watch out as St. Ming's got to walk backwards now on a Kuve, slowed for the top backwards. Weaver's wall comes down to Vice and space a big ton for Xiaohu, and they'll pick down Ruler, look for another kill as Crown tries to reinforce, but Core JJ will be shut down first. Three versus four, and they're re engaged, and a nice lantern brings them to safety. MLXG will keep running, and now Uzi wants to come back in, will not be stunned, the hook will not land, but they might not down Haru, he's flashless, he has no roads out, 5 to 1 RNG! KT Rolster looked strong during groups, and were the one Korean team that looked as unstoppable as usual. That said, they did take a loss to Edward Gaming, China's third seed. Meanwhile, Afrika also made it out of their group in first place. But even after the first group stage, it seemed like this world's might be different. Like a Cinderella story was possible. Quarterfinals began with a series most analysts did not expect to be so close. I'm gonna go KT Rolster, 3-1. All right, Deficio, what are you thinking? I got KT as well. I almost put 3-0, but then I saw IG will get at least two games on red side. I mm. figured they might win <laughs> one of them. And Jat, do you fall in line? I think this is an incredibly tough series to call. Right now, I have KT winning at 3-2. KT Rolster faced off against Chinese representative Invictus Gaming to kick off the bracket stage. What followed was one of the most back-and-forth series we've ever seen at Worlds. In classic Korean fashion, they wanted to use teamfighting stars like Galio and Kai'Sa to survive lane and grind IG into dust going late. But the likes of Rookie, The Shy, and Jackie Love had other ideas. They wanted to take it straight to KT, the roster many thought of as favorites. They wanted to pick lane-dominant champions and kill their foes early and often. Shy and Rookie gonna defend this one, two versus three so far. Gonna be taking Yukal very, very low, seeing if they can maybe find the kill. Instead, they're gonna find the damage down. Instead, on to Mata. Kill number one going over to IG. Yukal gonna be taken very low. Charmed up, brought down, double kill. Over to the side of Invictus Gaming. Looking to make it even more, and they strike back. That's huge for IG. Score was on the top side, getting that Rift Herald, and they strike so quickly. The Shy. It's Rookie zoning away. The rest of KT. Score's gonna be taken low. Shut down. The Shy finds his man as Rookie goes invulnerable. And KT heads for the hills. Death's gonna be chased down by the Shy. The damage pours through, but he's gonna be outplayed for now. Can the Shy even find this? It's Yukao buying some time for the other four members. Death and Mata will try to survive, but over the wall comes Rookie. Say hello to Invictus! 
Texas Gaming, it's five versus one. Barely half alive, the Shy keeping Mata in the fountain. The turret nearly gone, Jackie Love going up into the ultimate, gonna be kept alive for now. Charm down onto Spev, damage coming through, Death's already dead. Ning makes sure of that one, and Jackie goes unstoppable. It's a double kill for IG's jungler. It's a slaughter for Invictus Gaming. KT is wiped off the map, and the Nexus will join. Early game, they're going for two objectives, but speaking of leads. Meanwhile, Yukao collapsed on by three different members. Ning tries to hold on to the ball, flash away from Yukao, wants to stay alive. Mata and Death coming in with the top catch of Missile Voyage. Yukao going to be taken very low, saved by Mata with a wonderful devour. As Balog now trying to keep his teammates alive as Ning barely gets himself out over the wall, but the charge will take him down and Death makes it two for two. This is going to be your game ending push one way or the other. It's KT going for the base. It's going to be a base race. Nexus turret number one, taking down to half HP. KT looking to end it right here, right now. Ning taken down to half. It's Shy versus Smack at the base. At the same time, Mata's going to be taken very low. Yukao barely going to be kept alive. Score taken down to one quarter. Smack's nearly going to be killed now as well. Death taken so low. The flame call is not able to find him. Death goes in a killing spree. It's the Shy still in the base. It's KT looking to try to stand and fight if they can. The Shy has made his way onto the inhibitor turrets, onto the Nexus turrets. They're going to be taken down. KT still marching. It's a base race! The Shy's on the blue Nexus. KT's on the red. Who's gonna win? The Shy will not! And KT takes it to game four! Holy crap! There's <laughs> a half on some critical members. It means it might not be as important as it looks. Shy's gonna take some damage. Rookie looks to go in. Does get the passive pop. Shy's still gonna be soaking. Root comes down. Damage goes through. Jackie's able to find two Jackie Love! Jackie Love just found everybody! And that's gonna be a triple for IG! They're gonna find everyone! It's KT Ace! And this time, in an escape from the storylines of the past, they would succeed. 2014, they will eliminate the Korean first seed, and they will move on to the semifinals! The Korean favorite was vanquished. And on the other side of the bracket, it happened again, but worse. On a global stage, maybe no region has been more widely criticized than North America. For years, they've garnered tons of attention heading into Worlds, only to fail to live up to expectations. Which makes what Cloud9 did to Afrika all the more historic. A clean 3-0 sweep. This could well be it! Look at him clean up the map! And the last vestige of Korea has been destroyed! Cloud9 will make it to the semifinals! A 3-0 sweep! The first time in seven years! Cloud9 in the top four at Worlds! They didn't try to play like Koreans, they played Cloud9 League of Legends. Jensen played three assassins, LeBlanc, Lissandra, and Ari, while Sneaky performed well on early game carries like Lucian. Spent six, lights are out, taunt on a thresh, pops right away! A 3v2 in the fight as they go for the Sun and Azazel, and he will get traded! They had a plan to hit the rift and start a bloodbath immediately, and it went off without a hitch. Of the reality, the meme is dead, the gap is closed, Korea's not at the front, in fact, they are behind the EU LCS, the NA LCS, and the LPL as they are fully eliminated from Worlds 2018. Of course, there's still much to be learned about what exactly happened to Korea in 2018. Some teams more suited to the fast-paced Worlds meta were not in attendance, like Griffin and Kingzone Dragon X. It's not like Korea has been lacking for individual mechanics in years past. Make no mistake, no matter how Worlds impacts the region, this was a chink in Korea's armor. And you can only imagine how ready Korea will be to take back their crown in a year's time. Now, no matter how big a storyline Korea's collapse may be, it pales in comparison to the relative rise of the rest of the world. And for this, you have to look back to the NALCS summer split and the aforementioned Cloud9 roster, who at times looked quite different than what we saw at Worlds. By now, you know the story. Cloud9 benched their star players in favor of rookies due to underperformance and a lack of motivation. This is something that would never have been considered prior to LCS franchising this year, 
due to the looming threat of relegation. Then they bounced back. They developed the depth of their franchise and made a run to the finals, eventually earning their spot at Worlds in the gauntlet. Hey, Wall and Bob, you're not allowed on this side! This one's for winners! Cloud9-3-0! to finals is a great story, but Cloud9 will do you one better! 10th place to Worlds! Their LCS counterparts, G2 Esports and Fnatic, had their own roster development, albeit to a lesser extent. In unprecedented fashion, Reckless sat out multiple games during the funnel meta in order to put his team in the best position to win, while Bwipo matured into a versatile, aggressive player. Flash for oh, he's alive. He's alive for the moment. Maxwell's in the midst of all the minions. The Bellows, Bradham, Bwipo gets the 2v1 in the top lane. Box is on his way as well. They might even look for the die. Oh, can he get in there and at least stop a recall and maybe flash him for the kill? We have a shield for Maxor. Boxer, they stop both the recalls. Whippo coming in as well. Cassio on her way up. Cap's going to try and join this fight. Could be a very early dive here from Fnatic. Alfari jumps in. They're trying to turn it onto Whippo. He gets one. Assist goes across to Boxer as well. And now the dive is well and truly on. Cap's on his way. Boxer there to tank up the tower if needed. Maxor's trying to jump around through the bush. Does turn it out onto Boxer, but gets taken out by Cap. And so they grew. They learned to play their own kind of League of Legends. Not Korea's or China's or Reddit's, but their own. Then, during group stages, it all started to pay off. G2 Esports made it out of Group A as the second seed. Cloud9 escaped the de facto Group of Death in second, losing a tiebreaker to RNG. And in Group D, Fnatic won their tiebreaker, earning themselves a first seed. The West came ready to play. You saw what Cloud9 did to Afrika in the quarterfinals, but that was topped by G2 Esports' performance against the other tournament favorite, Royal Never Give Up. The third-seeded team from Europe took it to the likes of Uzi and RNG. They battled hard through a five-game bloodbath, and similarly to Cloud9, they played to their strengths. Ready to clean up the fight. And this is the best choice for RNG, seeing the TP come in. Try to turn and win the 4v3. For the vast majority of this... Oh, Perks! So, so close! The Ignite is ticking! That is he not it! Him. Perks is godlike! With the help of Yarn and NYT! Now they turn their attention on to let me. He's just gonna get run down. The wars! He's find the Lancer, the answer is no. <laughs> A death sentence finds its mark, but it doesn't matter. 11 kills to one! G2! They are gonna do it! G2 Esports leaned hard on Perks and Wonder, and they trusted in Kjarnan and Wadid to stay alive against Uzi in the ball lane. And they won. Oh, there's the engage! Death into such a mechanic creep delivers a perfect play! G8! Uzi's oh, down! Break up. Boy, Uzi down! It's all on Xiaohu! Xiaohu's running for the Perks! Perks has found him! Perks goes golden with the hourglass! They may have just done it! G2 have just dismantled RNG! And they're gonna take their way to the semi-finals! G2 Esports will find another kill, will tear open the base, and Busan is cheering and screaming and crying! The underdogs reign supreme at Worlds 2018, when expectations were at their lowest! The G2 Dynasty will be defined by taking down RNG! After more than half a decade of measuring themselves up against the top Korean teams, the West vanquished them in 2018. Players in the early years of their careers like Licorice, Whippo, Zazel, Broxa, and Caps were able to leverage creative play patterns on high skill cap champions in order to overcome Korea and China's dominant RNG. And with the impact of that young blood surrounding them, the veterans of the West shone as well. But heading into a semi-final with three Western teams, some dreams had to die. First, G2 fell to IG. They took G2's game plan right to them, using their solo laners in Rookie and The Shy to more or less run them over in a 3-0 sweep. G2 may have triumphed over Uzi, but two gods at once were too much to handle. Wonder trying to make something happen, but G2 looked like they just want to disengage this one now. They already got the pick onto the enemy jungler. Oh! So many people! That's the 
the Aatrox damage, and the Shy makes it happen. The Shy finds everyone there. Rookie's still hunting. Oh, Rookie makes it a double kill for himself. He cleans up perks and tragedy strikes for the EU LCS representatives. On the other side of the bracket, we saw more of the same dominance. Cloud9 may have been able to roll over Afrika, but Fnatic was another story. Cloud9 looked outclassed, and Fnatic swept the NA hopeful. Q's gonna land, and first blood goes to Bruxa! They killed them early and often. Jumping forward is Caps. He's got the chain as well! What a play! And three kills! Fnatic are destroying Cloud9 right now! Top of the West will be Fnatic, the kings of the West, the kings of Europe. It's going to be Fnatic looking to knock it down in the 5v3 to get those last few kills. A desperate engage and a shutdown on the cap. A few more seconds fought, but look at the blade color. It's everyone dead. Fnatic are the kings of the West, and they will represent in the world final. The stage was set. After a tournament full of upsets, there were two teams left. China versus Europe, Fnatic versus Invictus Gaming, two of the oldest orgs in professional League of Legends in a historic final. We knew that for once it wouldn't be a South Korean squad that hoisted the trophy, but IG still had a chance to keep the Summoner's Cup in the East. The teams hit the rift to kick off the finals. It was clear that this would be a challenge unlike any Fnatic had faced throughout the tournament. Fnatic had relied not just on their solo laners, but their entire team working together to get to the finals. But Invictus Gaming's solo lanes were on another level, with Rookie and The Shy arguably the two best players at their respective positions in the world. And when it came down to showtime, the West was no match for the East once more. Here we go though, Fnatic are on the board already, starting up the Rift Terror, Teleport comes in. IG not willing to let this go away without a fight. TP gonna be used by Fnatic, Rookie's gonna be off to the side, in the middle goes Whippo, gonna be popping the shield, keeping himself alive, Bell on the target, stunned up but not brought down just yet. Reckless gonna be firing from the back, but the Crimson Call, but the fear goes off! Whippo grabs the kill, down onto the enemy support, but can they find anything else? They're trying to get Hillisong away into the back, but Jackie Lung has already found himself that mark here as well. Whippo's taken down by Ning, the Rift Arrow goes their way as well, and IG have won themselves another fight. It's not him they're worried about, it should be that support, the Emperor's Divide gonna keep him alive right now, and the double kill over to Ning! The Vanguard's Edge will completely cut them down! Baron will be started up by Fnatic, seeing IG in the bottom part of the map. We'll see if IG can respond to this. Hillisong's gonna be cut, caught out, and the damage is more than enough. Rookie grabs the freebie onto him. Brox and Fnatic need to take down the Baron. It is going to be ultimately secured by Broxa as Rookie goes into the pit to pick up one. Won't be able to find the second. Shut down over to Fnatic. Cap mowed oh, down by the Shy and Ning as now Brox is in some trouble over the wall. Goes the Alistar, and Fnatic will be aced as Jackie's in the base, and they're looking to end it right here. Fnatic, they're looking for a gank. They want to make the play onto the Shy, but he also wants to turn things around. A lot of damage comes out from him. Quickly goes into the resurrection. 200 HP again, but now brought down. And Ning walks into a really bad spot. He'll be taken very low, but Rookie comes in to save him. The double kill's already gone over to Reckless. Can they find anything else? They're trying to get away, but the shutdown goes over to the side of Balan and IG. Fnatic bringing the reinforcements as Hillisong tries to buy some time. Caps and Soaz make their way into the fight, but Jackie's already dominating. Rookie's able to find the lockdown. The damage comes through. It's Jackie Love! Caps will be the last man standing, but he will fall with the rest. Reckless still alive, but can they keep this game up? It's an impossible defense at this point. Broxanne Reckless versus the world. Reckless goes on a rampage, but Ning is still there, pressuring onto the turret with the rest of IG. Reckless is down, Brox is away. IG are on the Nexus. The LPL has never won before, but that will change today. The Crownless are finally king, and Invictus Gaming are your 2018 world champions. Invictus Gaming slaughtered Fnatic in the finals of Worlds 2018. They found leads early and often, and Fnatic were just no match. For the first time in history, China sat atop the world of League of Legends. And for Rookie, it was proof that his commitment to China hadn't been wasted. 
that he didn't need to play in Korea to win. Korea was dethroned and new heroes of the East were crowned. There will be talk of the 131 metagame, fast games, and flukes here and there. But make no mistake, after 2018, League of Legends is finally a global game. A game where any team can win on any given day. Of Korean dominance, Chinese phenoms, European ingenuity, and North American hopefuls. Now it's time to see if China can defend their crown in 2019, as the new era of international parody opens a new chapter in the story of League of Legends. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.